two, one. And good afternoon, folks at Chief Meteorologist Nick Lilliga here with your tropical update uh, for September 12th of uh, 2018. Got a lot going on in the tropics, and uh, we're going to dive right into it. In fact, we've got uh, breaking news on our tropical update here in a second. Uh, we've got the Invest 95L over here. We've got Florence there. Uh, we've got Isaac here. We've got Helene here. And now we have subtropical storm Joyce there. Uh, we're going to start with Invest 95L. Still watching this with a 70% chance of development through the next uh, two to five days. Uh, we've seen a real explosion in the last about uh, hour of convection down here, though not really rotating as much around uh, a localized area of low pressure as much. But uh, nevertheless, there's still a chance of development as this is going to continue off to the northwest. We'll talk about the track on that one here in a second. How about this? Yeah, this is Florence, sure, but back in behind it, there's a chance five days out that yet another storm brews up in the tropics. We'll talk about uh, when that finally shows up here in a second as well. But uh, how about that? The poor folks of Bermuda uh, getting waves from Florence and then may have another thing just off to the south. And then this one had a 90% chance of development but right before we got on here uh, named subtropical storm uh, Joyce, uh, according to a couple of uh, reports. I, I still I shouldn't get ahead of myself. I still haven't read the official National Hurricane Center report on this. Uh, but it's being reported by a handful of outlets, so um, I'm just going to kind of go with it. Uh, either way, you slice it with a 90% chance of development, and with it looking like this, uh, chances are we're going to have at least something uh, soon. So again, Florence, Isaac, Helene, Joyce, uh, it's a real active uh, tropics uh, right now. We're going to start with uh, Florence. Uh, right now down to a Category 3, anticipated to stay as a 3. Some good news. Recall yesterday uh, at this time, it was slated to be a category four kind of in this ballpark here with wind at 155 miles an hour. It's now down to 120. The difference at that point is probably moot because it's still knocking over trees, taking off roofs and all the water that's uh, powered up behind it given the wind and the 83 foot wave that was uh, seen earlier by reconnaissance. All of that stuff is still coming ashore. It doesn't matter at 30 miles an hour once you get above 100. I, I mean, it isn't really that big of a deal. But this thing is going to kind of curly cue its way toward uh, the coast and then make itself uh, back inland and uh, to the west and eventually to the north. The thought is now that this is going to move toward the North Carolina coast and then kind of peel to the west and southwest and make landfall somewhere between just uh, south of the Outer Banks of North Carolina all the way down with a possible landfall somewhere around Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, the reason the steering flow on this has really fallen apart over the last little bit and the models are now picking up on as it gets closer, the steering flow may fall apart even more, uh, which means it's just going to kind of drift around once it's there. Uh, currently moving to the northwest at 16, but we'll have to see how long that holds. So we've got to Isaac down here, uh, which uh, the latest from the Hurricane Center has it at winds at 60 miles an hour. Now trucking moving to the west at 20. Uh, so that's good news for us. Uh, slated to be a tropical storm as it moves into the Caribbean off to the south of Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Kind of making a beeline toward Jamaica. But as it makes it toward Jamaica, it is slated to fall apart. Look at these wind on here, uh, somewhere around 40 to 45 miles an hour by the time it makes it there. So why we're watching this is because as it gets a little bit closer, I'm going to kind of slide our map down and across. As it gets a little bit closer and to the south of Cuba, you're starting to get some influences once it's here to pull it off to the north. And what we're watching is how strong are those influences and how far to the north is it getting pulled? Or does it just continue to the northwest and toward the Gulf of Mexico? And again, we'll get into details on this here coming up in a bit. I've got Helene on here. Now, Helene's way down here, and I've got this zoomed way out to kind of point to the fact that this thing is going to be a big problem for like London. Uh, in the next uh, about week. So uh, Helene ain't done yet, uh, even though it's just uh, floating around in the ocean. We said, oh, yeah, this is probably going to be just a fish storm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, yeah, I guess Helene had other plans. Eventually, as a probably uh, subtropical depression out here, uh, really going to cause some problems for uh, England. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, by the way, we got more waves coming off the African coast. 
the good news, we've got this one and this next one. So at least there's a break in here for a little while once we get through all the mess that's happening out across the Atlantic. Okay, we'll dive right into Florence here. Hurricane Florence, a present chance uh, that you see tropical storm force wind along the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina coast. 100% chance. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It is a, according to this forecast, a guarantee that you end up seeing tropical storm force winds in Wilmington. Uh, hurricane force wind, I mean, it's still pretty high. Uh, better than two thirds. That's the majority uh, vote there. Uh, would you know, pass a bill in the House at 68 percent, uh, 48 percent as you make your way down toward Myrtle Beach and a little bit lower to the south. The good news here is Norfolk and Richmond have been removed from the percent chance of seeing hurricane force winds. So you folks in southern Virginia are probably resting a little easier, but not completely uh, easy. Is uh, you're still looking at tropical storm force wind, but at least not the. The, the hurricane force wind uh, here. Uh, rainfall totals according to the American model suggesting just boat loads and bucketfuls of rain. Uh, Wilmington, not only do you have a 100% chance according to the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center of seeing tropical storm force wind, but you also have a chance of picking up more than 20 inches of rain. Uh, it doesn't take much more than tropical storm force wind with 20 inches of rain to knock over a lot of trees and they're still slated to see hurricane force wind on top of that. Uh, the rain mixes all the way in uh, to parts of uh, inland North Carolina and South Carolina. In fact, in Boone, North Carolina, where the uh, Southern Miss Golden Eagles were slated to play App State, Appalachian State, that game has been canceled. Uh, probably for a handful of reasons, but probably leading the list, I would say not so much the weather in Boone, but getting there, uh, you've got to go through mountains. You're probably landing in Charlotte somewhere, and they're going to have tropical storm force wind and a lot of rain, uh, probably a threat for tornadoes as well. So it just wasn't a safe go of it. Uh, we can turn the uh, European numbers on, and uh, the Euro is uh, even a little more generous with the uh, rainfall totals down along the coast from Myrtle Beach to Wilmington, somewhere between 20 and 30 inches. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bullseye in there of at least 40 inches of rain somewhere along the Carolina coast. And again, mixing that with tropical storm force and most likely hurricane force when folks down there are going to lose a lot of trees and uh, there are going to be power outages for a very long time. I think the local government was talking about uh, being without power or without help from local government entities for up to maybe two or three weeks. For folks uh, down here in South Mississippi, you guys remember Hurricane Katrina and everything that went along with that. You guys know what it's like down here to be without water and power for multiple weeks after a category three hurricane. Isaac now out here in the Atlantic uh, falls apart. Uh, we, we're feeling pretty good about our models in here. They're all sliding just off to the south of the islands, uh, actually lined up with what the Hurricane Center is saying. It's at this point by the time we get to Sunday and recall yesterday, the day before, the day before, the day before, I've been saying we're feeling pretty confident about what's going to happen until Saturday. It's after Saturday that we lose our confidence and the certainty of this forecast. Nothing's changed in the last 24 hours. If anything, the lines have gotten further spread apart, unfortunately. Uh, so we'll continue to watch this through the rest of this week into the weekend. But we're not going to know everything until we get through this weekend, I think, and into the beginning of next week in terms of what this means for uh, South Mississippi. Uh, Invest 95L that's out here. Again, this is still just basically a Texas storm. We may get some spray from this, some high cloud cover or some showers and uh, thunderstorms in Louisiana, Mississippi and uh, Alabama. But outside of that, uh, that's probably uh, about it. All right, my favorite map, 700 millibar moisture, 850 vorticity. And, you know, this thing looked uh, pretty boring uh, almost all summer long. No complaints. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Isaac, Florence, Joyce, Helene, next wave off of Africa, Invest 95L. Uh, this is one of those nonlinear maps. You can't just look at one thing because so much is happening right now. Uh, suffice it to say, as we head through the next couple of days, we've got landfall somewhere along the east coast with Florence. While we keep an eye on Isaac, 
Uh, Helene makes a beeline for England and subtropical storm Joyce is uh, spinning around out here. Here's our next wave coming off of Africa reasonably disorganized and uh, invest 95 L moves uh, ashore across parts of Texas is most likely and like we've been saying this whole time is either a tropical depression weak tropical storm and at this point it may never get truly uh, organized. We'll have to keep an eye on that for the next 24 hours. By the way if it did we would have Florence, Isaac, Helene, Joyce, and whatever Invest 95L turns into, uh, if it turns into anything. We would have five named storms all at the same time. It's actually uh, a welcome sight that this next one off of the coast of Africa uh, isn't necessarily uh, very well organized. Uh, Florence still floating around. Uh, here, this is that 20% area we were talking about a couple minutes ago. I know that seems like five months ago in this forecast discussion, uh, given everything that's going on, but there's the 20% chance of development that we were talking about right behind Florence off to the south of Bermuda. Still watching Isaac drifting its way toward Cuba. There's your 20% chance. Uh, probably a tropical depression is what this is depicting here. We'll have to see what ends up happening with it. But finally, the door gets shut off the coast of Africa with plenty of dry air out here. And then we're left to just watch whatever this is and what's ever left of uh, Isaac as it marches uh, our direction. What happens as it marches this direction? Well, uh, we can take a look at our 500 millibar map. And uh, first off, uh, this ridge of high pressure that's out here, the steering flow on Florence, that's this little circle here, area of high pressure here. You see how this thing kind of like humps over the top of uh, Florence. The reason that this is slowing down is because we've extended high pressure around it and it's kind of running into it and pulling up and stopping. The reason that it slides a little to the south before it moves to the west is high pressure builds into the north. Everything goes around high pressure clockwise. So it takes a second before it to get picked up and pulled to the west. That same area of high pressure gets shunted off to the east. Again, we're still talking clockwise around here. Now we finally pick up Florence and pull it back off to the northeast. Well, what happens with that? Well, that high pressure gets pushed off here. There's the 20% back in behind it. And then we've got another area of high pressure building in from the west. So we've got a little area, a little opening in between. We've got our 20% here, which is going to be riding around. And then we've got down here, that's Isaac, or whatever's left of Isaac at that point. And the weakness between that ridge of high pressure here, this ridge of high pressure here, is why we are keeping a close eye on Isaac, despite the fact that uh, we don't anticipate to see much out of it as, we head, as it heads through the Caribbean and as we head through the rest of this week and toward the weekend. I know, a lot going on in the tropics. Hopefully I covered it all. If you have any questions, you know where to find me on Facebook. But that's your tropical update for September 12th of 2018, brought to you by the good folks at the Tropical Pool and Spa.